What's going on? Uh, I was just eating. What are you eating dinner for? Well, I didn't think you'd be back. Did you get my you... texts? Well, yeah, but I didn't think you'll be back so You're really soon. starting to annoy me now. Why do you keep doing this? You keep doing this. I keep warning you. What are you doing? You make me keep doing this to you. You bring this on yourself. I'm sorry, Terry. I know it's my fault. I know it's my fault. Please. I'm sorry, Terry. I know this is my fault. I'm sorry. This is the only way you listen. I'm sorry. Please. Please. No, Terry, don't do this again. Don't do this again, please. My name's Misha. This is my husband, Terry. My family and friends would say that I'm in a violent and abusive relationship, but I'm not quite ready to see it like that yet. And for the next two years, I still won't be. But you see, I've come to see this behavior as quite acceptable and normal. And this is due to being slowly and subtly manipulated by Terry. This is also because growing up I watched my dad continuously being abusive to my mum. Later it will be made clear to me by a therapist that watching this behaviour at a young impressionable age has had a profound effect on how I now view relationships. I also can't help but see Terry's violent outbursts as being my fault. In two years I'll see how I'm true this is, but for now though I just can't see it. I still believe Terry will change soon. He will change, even though everyone keeps telling me he never will. Down the line, I will realise that he won't change. Not all the time that I accept and support his behaviour. If anything, he'll get worse. Much worse, as I am yet to find out. At the moment, I'm not making good decisions or choices, mainly because my confidence and self-esteem is at an all-time low. Terry has done this so slowly over the years and so subtly that I haven't even noticed what he's been doing to me. I also have such little love for myself that I am seeking love in anyone who is willing to show me any form of attention, even if the attention is negative. This is another reason I feel that I need Terry in my life. He uses this disempowered view I have of myself to his advantage. But again, I won't even begin to see this for the next few years, even though it is obvious to family and close friends. Fortunately, in three years I would have left Terry, because through professional help, support and understanding of therapists and friends, I'll finally see the situation for what it really is. My confidence, respect and love for myself will grow too. In fact, so much so that a year after I leave Terry, I'll go on to become a credible and motivational speaker for women in abusive relationships. I'll go on to empower and prevent women from being in the situation that I am currently in. I'll still need to continuously work on myself, but at least I'll be away from Terry, whilst making sure I don't get attracted or drawn to any more men like him. For now though, it seems I'm gonna to have to go through these experiences as they will force me to look into areas of my life that I am always avoiding. Please bear with me as I continue with my development.
Hi, my name's Terry, and I'm Michelle's abusive partner. Right now, I don't see myself as an abuser. I actually believe that all my outbursts are Michelle's fault. If she didn't wind me up and make me so mad, I wouldn't be forced to lash out at her, would I? In two years' time, though, I will come to realise how untrue that belief really is. In about two and a bit years, with the help of a therapist, I will also come to see that the pain I inflict on Michelle is a direct reflection of the pain I feel inside. But unfortunately, finding that out won't make me stop. What will really help me change is when in two years I'm arrested and serve a two year prison sentence for beating up and nearly killing Michelle. During my time behind bars, I will be forced to take on going professional help, which will really uncover the causes of my behaviour and will help me to stop emotionally, mentally and physically abusing Michelle and women in general. It will come to light when growing up, watching my dad continually abuse me and my mum caused me to subconsciously find comfort in repeating the pattern. Not only that, I will also find that I carried so much hate, resentment and anger towards my mum for not backing me up and allowing dad to continuously abuse me. I now direct that anger, hate and resentment to Michelle. At the moment though, I have no idea why I do what I do. I honestly can't see how the past has affected my present. In fact, I'm so deluded at this point, I've genuinely convinced Michelle and myself that this is all her fault. Don't get me wrong, I do sometimes feel slight remorse after giving her a good battering, but I've quickly learned to silence and bury those emotions before they surface long enough to have an effect on me. I will come to realise down the line that I learned that ability growing up as a child. My mind learned how to do that to protect me from the painful emotions I couldn't deal with. As a result, my empathic ability never developed properly. Now unlike most of you watching, my ability to empathise and feel remorse is no longer there. What it is, but not to the same level as yours. In fact, in three years just before leaving prison, I will be diagnosed as having a narcissistic personality disorder and will go on for the next few years in therapy and on medication. But despite the therapy, medication and the progress I make, there will be a day when I look back at all of this and feel extreme guilt and remorse. I will have many nightmares and sleepless nights and become addicted to prescription and recreational drugs to counter this additional inner pain. There will also be times when I will self-harm and even try and take my own life. In fact, five years after leaving prison, I will take my own life. I will take an overdose of prescribed tablets. My last regrets before I die will be that I wish I had someone in my life growing up as a kid that recognised what was happening to me and mum and helped us. I wish I had someone, anyone that recognised what was going on and seen how it was affecting my emotional and mental health. I will also wish that I had the courage and confidence to get help sooner. And lastly, I wish I had told my mum I loved her and that I forgive her. The only good I can see that will come out of all of this is that I managed to recognise and break the abuse cycle and that Michelle went on to become a powerful and positive role model for women that fall victim to guys like me and that through her work, she will help thousands of women across the UK. For now though, I don't know what's yet in store for me, so please bear with me whilst I return to what I was doing and learn the harsh lessons I'm yet to learn.